Welcome. Um, my name is Chris Matia. My call sign is Whiskey Six Alpha Hotel. I am joined by my four, my three esteemed colleagues, uh, David KK6DA, David W0DHG, and Dan NR6V. And we do a show once a week called Wave Talkers. Um, let me just switch over the background, minimize this down. Um, we talk about emergency communications, ham radio. We do a lot of talking about Winlink, and we're thrilled to be here. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to walk you through kind of the evolution, if you will, of, of Wave Talkers and what we've done and the kind of philosophies that we use and, and so forth. And, and hopefully you guys find this interesting. So um, let me go ahead and um, I'm going to quickly unpin myself. And then I'm going to place the pin if this works right. And then bam, look, they're all gone. And I'm here wow, by myself for a that's second. Great. Right? Isn't that cool? One, it's a cool one trick button. That one button. One button. So so this is the four of us. And we start off all of our shows the exact same way. We ask you to send a win link check-in to us. And at the end of the show, we're going to map and see if you know who's here. So if you have access to WinLink, open up your copy of WinLink right now, create a new message, send it to all four of us. I'm going to uh, uh, paste in the chat all four of our call signs, if I can. I've got it all uh, loaded up here. There we go. You can just use that um, KK6DA, W0DHG, NR6V, and W6AH. I'm going to show you in just a second how to uh, how to create that email using the WinLink check-in form. And in the comments section of that WinLink check-in form, I would like you to answer this question. What about ham radio are you most passionate about? Pretty simple question. So with that, let me switch over. Which one is it? It's number four today. So let me switch over to my PC that I've got. I've got WinLink up. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to just, if you've got WinLink up, just go ahead and open it up, click on a new message. When the new message window comes up, come up here to the top where it says select template. Go ahead and click on that one time. It's gonna bring up your template manager. And this is one of the magic things about WinLink is that especially for emergency communicators, most all of the forms that we use with our shared agencies are all in here. So you click on the little plus that's next to standard templates and versions, and they're they're all broken down by a bunch of these different categories. Um, what you want to go is come down here to the ones that are mapping and GIS forms, because these are wicked, wicked cool. You click on that, you come down here near the bottom, and there's one that says winlink check-in. TXT. Just go ahead and give that a double click. And if the demo gods are with you, it should open up in your browser automatically. It's really cool how that works. You come up here, you click on date and time, it automatically fills in the current date and time. Uh, this is an exercise. You want to fill that out. For band, you guys are all connected to the internet right now. So just use Telnet. You don't need to send this via RF and, and take time connecting up your radio. If you want to, you're welcome to, but just go ahead and do uh, NA, leave it set to Telnet. You're going to put in all four of our call signs right here, just separate them by semicolons. Um, and it's uh, KK6DA, W0DHG, NR6V, and W6AH. Just fill those in. Fill out the rest of these forms here. Your location, uh, you can put your home QTH. Uh, uh, really, what you want is to make sure you get your latitude and longitude. This should automatically be filled in for you uh, based on your grid square. Here's that comment section. Answer that question for us. What are you most passionate about with ham radio? You get to the bottom, you hit the submit button, and uh, it's going to yell at me because there's, uh, there's some things that are not filled in here. But when you hit submit, um, it'll fill in all that data here right into the message, post it to your outbox, and then go ahead and send that. You can just send it via Telnet. Uh, you just use the open session button. I'm going to do a, a quick check because I know some people might be checking in right now. So let me hit the start. Let's see if any messages are coming in. And look at that. We have WinLink check-ins coming in from all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, as you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and download those. At the end, we're going to come back here and we're going to check this and we're going to map everybody and see where everybody is coming into tonight. So with that, let me jump back over to, to the slides. 
because the story of wave talkers really goes in, in two parts. And, and part one really starts off with my own personal passion project. Um, see, I, I'm fairly new to amateur radio. I got licensed in, right after the Thomas Fire rolled through Ventura County in uh, 2018, uh, 2017, 2018. And in January of 2018, I got my license and I quickly upgraded uh, to Amateur Extra. And my background is in teaching and learning and, and video production, those sorts of things. And um, so I, I had just finished recording a course. I'm an author for LinkedIn Learning, and I just finished recording a course called Creating and Deploying Micro Learning. And I thought to myself, you know, I just upgraded to Extra. Um, I, I've gotten involved with this amateur radio stuff. I'm, I'm kind of interested in getting involved with emergency communications. Let me see if I can take the concepts that I taught in this micro learning course and apply them to amateur radio. It, it was just going to be like a little side project for me initially. And so it's, that's pretty much what I did. I, I started with all three license exams, technician general and extra. Um, I, I took on creating uh, a website that would support somebody who was working through these from a micro learning perspective. It was all about the focus on teaching and learning. So for instance, every single question on all three license exams is its own dedicated page that allows the user to come in. They can click on what the correct answer is or the wrong answer, and it'll let you know if you're right or wrong. You can click on all of the, the different questions in a particular topic. Um, I, I then went through and I thought, you know, when I was studying for my exam, I I really wanted to be able to listen. I'm an auditory learner. So I, I went ahead and I did an audio recording of every single question with the correct answer. And so you can go to my quick reviews on there and you can click on and you can listen to, to all of them. There's also, um, also on the quick reviews, the other thing that I found when I was going through the books is I would highlight the correct answer. So I could focus on the question and just the right answer as I was trying to quickly move through the exam. So all of those are all highlighted and this is all printable. So it's a very quick kind of study guide for somebody who's working, working through all of this information. The other thing that I did was I wrote a little mini web application to do the testing. So you can go on to all three exams. They're all completely free. All this information is all free up on the internet because it's all published publicly. So why would somebody pay to access all this information? So this is all up there for free. So anyone can go on here, click on even try a different test and it'll dynamically generate you a brand new test formatted in all the right way. You click on all of the, the correct answers. You answer your test, you hit submit. It highlights the correct and the wrong answers that you got, tells you what your score is. And you can say, let me try another test. And it kind of works through. And that's that's pretty much what Wave Talkers was for about the first year and a half, almost two years of its existence. It was basically a study guide and I was constantly refining the overall website. And there's, there's a lot of extra little bits and pieces in here, but that's, that's kind of the high level of it. So that brings us to part two. Notice part one was really quick. Like there wasn't a whole lot to say. It's, a, it's an online study guide with the materials that are, that are freely available. So that brings us to the 2019 State of California exercise, uh, statewide exercise, and uh, a discovered need for WinLink. And with that, what I would like to do is I would like to, because I'm no longer needed at this point, I would like to bring... <laughs> you are needed. You are I, always needed. Why do you I say am, that? I am not needed. Oh, but oh, I, what oh. I would like to do is I would like oh. to bring um, my colleague KK60A up to... Tell us about what, what happened during that exercise and what did you guys do? Our mission at Aries LAX is to support hospitals. And we provide backup communication to uh, Los Angeles County Public Health Department Medical Alert Center. What's the MAC? The MAC is the traffic cop for ambulance traffic in Los Angeles County. Last thing you want to do is send an ambulance to a hospital that can't take it. So this is where hospitals report their uh, ability to treat patients. And there was a time during the worst of COVID 
not uh, Omicron, but the original virus, where more than 90% of the hospitals in Los Angeles County were in a process of diversion. That means don't send an ambulance here. 90% of the 70 911 receiving hospitals said, we don't have space. That's pretty amazing. So the MAC operates as the traffic cop. And we support our hospitals to report their status to the MAC. How do we do that? Well, there are a couple of forms. One is most fundamental, the hospital uh, bed status report. We have beds available for this, 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 and this. We can demonstrate that in a moment. Another is a resource request. We need these drugs. We need this staff. Can you send, can you supply from outside? That's our job in an emergency to provide that kind of backup to hospitals in Los Angeles County. Well, just take a for instance, and we learned this in 2019. You cannot do this by voice. You just can't. Now, we wish we had enough people to support all 70 hospitals in LA County. We don't. Actually, there's 74. So let's say we support 30 to 35. That's optimistic. Um, so we're doing a statewide medical exercise in which we're asking resource requests. Those resource requests may include complex drugs like OxyContin, iSpell, Oscar, X-Ray, Yankee, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, by the time you get to two or three hospitals, you're backed up at least an hour. And that's what occurred in 2019. So with WinLink, you can transmit that entire list or spreadsheet in seconds. It's clearly something we need and clearly something we will use next time we have a statewide medical exercise. Uh, it has been canceled for this year, but next year we'll do it and we may just do it anyway uh, in our own county, in our own group. But that's the power of using WinLink. It can be done in seconds versus doing it in voice. Chris, back to you. Thanks. So let's um, let's bring in uh, David and Dan also into this conversation a little bit um, because you guys. Um, oops, I did that wrong. <laughs> well, let's do it like this, maybe. There we go. Now I've got me back in here. Now let's bring you guys all back in here. It's tough when you have so many daggone uh, buttons here to, to press all the time. Um, so you guys then decided somebody needed to help teach WinLink here in the Los Angeles area. And you guys started a, mm. a class. And I, I know because I took the first class that you guys did. It, it happened during COVID. You were using Zoom. What? How did that go? Oh. So let's let's step back a little bit to that statewide hospital exercise in 2019. And I know um, David participated. I, I can't remember, Dan, did you participate in that? I did. Yeah, and and I did as well. And I will tell you that um, we started at 0800 at the hospital that I was at. And by 915, I pretty much walked away from the radio because there wasn't a chance on this green earth that I was going to actually be able to talk to anyone important yeah, and it was transfer an hour my hour backed up by 9 yeah, 15. yeah and and, An it, hour. and part of the problem was everybody's traffic was priority whether the priority was to tell people that they didn't have traffic or not and and it was kind of a cyclical kind of thing and so fast forward to covid um a lot of us had been talking about um what was going on internationally as early as uh, the end of december 2019 and into January and starting to think about it. And, you know, my job is in business continuity and emergency management. So we're kind of keeping an eye on all of these things. And as soon as we all got sent to lockdown in Southern California in mid-March, 
um, I went and signed up and paid for this thing called Zoom. Ah. That I'd, I had played around a little bit with a free account and I didn't really know about, but what I did know was with a, a week and a half to go in the month of March that in April we were going to have an Aries meeting and some other meetings that um, I participate with, and, uh, Boy Scouts and otherwise, that we need to move forward with and we can't just like stay home and say, oh, well, COVID's got us. Right. And so we signed up for for accounts and we started having meetings. And in April, we had the first of our Aries meeting and we called it the first uh, virtual online meeting. And sh maybe two or three months after that, Dan and David and I talking back and forth amongst ourselves said, um, you know, we need to up our game. We need to give people things to do. We need to push amateur radio forward. And um, as Chris will tell you, um, was it? October 2019, Oliver came to meet with us, Oliver Dully. Yeah, um, Oliver, so, Oliver came in 2019. That was my first exposure to yeah. Link. yeah. And, uh, and uh, Oliver Dooley is the DEC of Aries LAX Northeast. Most of us got our introduction to Winlink because of Oliver. Mm -hmm. And frankly, a lot of us came away, <laughs> our heads <laughs> exploding. Yeah, and, right. it was, and, it was just oh my God, yeah. that was just incredible yeah six, 60 minutes wasn't enough that no. we could um we could maybe understand the concept of email over amateur radio but not how to uh implement it or how to manage it or any of those other things so you know we got together and said well how about if we do some classes and figure yeah. out how to teach other people how to do it from my office here at home and Dan's office at his home and David's office at his home. Yeah. And we, we just and we have broke what, out at it. 40, 50 people at a time. And we did that three or four times. times. Two or three times. And, yeah. And, and then, and then fast forward to Chris joining us and you sent out an all call and we said, well, should we just open it up nationally? Let's see and what happened. What happened? So, so I, I think it was Oliver actually who who put it on the Rat Pack yeah, he, list he initially. Did. He did. Thank and you, Oliver. We, we opened. This was November of of twenty twenty one. We we opened registration on a Friday, and by Tuesday, we had to close registration because we had two hundred and sixty some uh, people had signed up to take this four session class. Oh, and, I think thirty seven states. Oh. Holy! Yeah, thirty seven. It was it was incredible. You you guys just it was it was the Rat Pack group who really came to that yeah. to that first class um, in in great numbers. And so what we what we did there is is then we took this idea of let's go from doing just a Zoom class. Um, I've been doing remote production, um, and I've, I've had this web uh, this uh, Wave Talkers platform already, and a bunch of other infrastructure. So let let me um let me walk through what we did then for the first kind of portion of that class so let's do this and uh -oh. is this back. greatest hit is this greatest hit <laughs> yeah this is kind of the greatest hit <laughs> so, so right. this, but this is how we started off winlink basics for mcom just getting started it was a four-part uh class that we did and um we started off with a very simple question this was the very first slide in the first class and it was how does email work we wanted to start with what are you already familiar with um, and bring all of that knowledge framework that you already have all of that scaffolding and then build upon it and through the course of several different slides we worked up to this basic diagram of kind of how email works. You've got your email client on the left-hand side, you send it to an email server, it goes out to the internet, it magically finds its way to the remote email server and gets delivered to the end user. And then that end user can respond back through that through that whole chain. But we stepped through it step by step. We kind of grew the slides one, one by one to really lock in that, um, that knowledge. Uh, that that was already there. And then we we kind of walked through the process of what WinLink is and how WinLink is similar and how it's different. And in the end, we ended up with this diagram, which we ended up using through a lot of our different classes because it really kind of solidified a lot of the different concepts that we had. So at the top where it says session window, that's your WinLink 
session that you're going to open. And when you go to send messages via WinLink, much of the beginning part is all exactly the same as email, but it's the sending part that really kind of changes things. You can send your message via the, the yellow arrow there. That is your, your internet connection. And then it goes from the internet. This is the Telnet uh, path. It goes from the internet. It goes and it finds one of these RMS or radio message server gateways. And that will allow your your message traffic to be able to route to other radio message gateways. Now, those gateways are all connected via the internet, but they also have RF links. And our RF links were all uh, designated here in yellow. So even if the internet did go down, your message could get through through a different path. It really shows the robustness that, uh, that the WinLink development team has built in to all of this infrastructure. But, but wait, there's more because there's this other path that you can send all of your messages through. From your WinLink client, you can connect to your radio via some means. In this case, blue is a USB cable. Um, you connect up to your radio and then your radio can send out to an RMS gateway uh, via RF as well. And then the message can traverse the rest of the system and be delivered to some other client. So this ended up being a really helpful diagram for us as we were walking people through step by step by step. How do you figure all of this stuff out? And we went through several other different diagrams. Here's another one, for instance, where we're talking about how you actually connect your radio into Windows. And all of these would actually build over the series of several different animated builds. So in this case, we've got your radio connected to a signal link that's connected into the USB port. The first place you have to make all of your settings. You know, the first question you're always asked by a tech support person is, is it plugged in? And so we looked at all the different plug connections from the USB port into Windows and setting up your control panel and how you adjust your audio there and how that connects into your virtual TNC. In this case, we were using UZ7HO sound modem and then how that needs to be configured and then how that connects into WinLink and how that establishes the entire signal chain. And so we worked with people to teach them how to identify these different components all along the way. We expanded the, the that same diagram out and we were able to talk about digipeating where let's say the, you, the gateway that you can normally reach is not connected to the internet. So you need to be able to send your traffic from your wind link through your radio into some other station that's acting as a digipeter that will then pass that traffic on to a gateway that actually has connection to the internet that can send that message out. So we stepped through lots of these different scenarios at the end of four weeks. And, and I gotta give a big shout out, first of all, to the WinLink development team. First, absolutely, because they they showed up, like literally Steve Waterman, who's, who's on the call today, um, showed up, I think, to our second class. Yeah. Um, and he jumped in and, and started starting chatting with us a little bit. And the next week, more of the WinLink development team showed up. And by week four, I think we had most all of them on the call with us. Um, and that was a real game changer for us because not only, I mean, we, we've been using the WinLink system and we've been teaching it for a while, um, but these guys are the absolute true experts. They're the ones building the system. So they could catch us when we made a mistake and they could answer questions that we just couldn't come up with an answer for and, and how to, to work through that. So we, we get to the end of our four weeks, uh, the end of our class, and we're like, okay, well, we're, we're done with that. We're, we're good. And everyone oh, no. in the class went, oh, well, no. what are we doing next week? Ah. Suddenly, Sunday afternoons became the time to connect to Wave Talkers. And so we scratched our head and went, well, we'll, we'll talk about it. And so we, we got together on a Zoom call and we went, well, what can we talk about next week? And we came up with a show. I think we did two more in December. And then it came to be uh, time for Christmas. And so we said, all right, we're not going to do a show for Christmas or for New Year's. We're going we're gonna to leave it off. And if you have a Zoom account and you have a, a scheduled meeting, um, and somebody joins your scheduled meeting, you get a notification. You get a little email that says, hey, so-and-so joined your meeting. So it's Christmas, <laughs> and my email starts blowing up with 
people who have been coming to our wave talker <laughs> class showing up to a class that we didn't send the announcements out and they just joined on so i called the guys we hopped in and we did an ad hoc just kind of chatted for a while with folks um so it comes to be january we get together we start doing a few more shows um and we started building out some of the other topics one of the things that that really kind of came about as a kind of a big uh shift for us was was when we launched a denial of service attack against winlink <laughs> in one of our shows oh you did, I say you that that. did you do that did you do that we did no, it by we, we did it as a group david it was yeah, all of okay. us all, all right all right group. all of us did Yep. Luckily, the Winlink development team was on the call with us, so they were able to kind of help us with that. So, so here's what we did. There's a new feature <laughs> in Winlink that was new at kind of around this time <laughs> that allows you to map, and we're going to show you that here in just a, in a few minutes, um, that allows you to map check-ins from the forums that have come in. So we got this bright idea. Hey, guys. Let's have everybody who wants to play, and it was all of these pins all over the place. Everyone who wants to play, send us your call sign, and we'll publish the list. And so we did, and then we said, okay, everybody who is east of the Mississippi, send a message to everybody on the list, <laughs> and you're, you have no power. Everybody who's west of the Mississippi, you have power, and we're going to play with this mapping thing. So with each volley, we were generating about three and a half thousand WinLink messages across the system at a time. And it kind of hiccuped a little bit. It was red light, red that, light that, that we had. Um, but it was an awesome exercise. And you can go back and you can watch it was episode eight. Um, yeah. You can go back and you can watch it and you can see everybody was able to get the data, play with it and really work with it. We were really working on trying to demystify all of this information that that is Winlink because Winlink's not really a program. It's it's a whole system of tools. And the the really the and it's been around for a really long time. Like if you're not familiar with the long term story, um, it started all. It got its start for people who were crossing oceans and, and boats and needed to be, be needed to be able to send uh, email traffic uh, back uh, to to land. And so um, it's it's got a long history. But but really the killer application are those forms that we just showed you that are in there. And now the Winlink team has built in this mapping feature which is just awesome. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. So we started to branch out a little bit from WinLink, still with the idea of emergency communications, but we went into things like creating a development kit of, of, of or a deployment kit. What is it that you need? And you can see the, the items that are there in kind of that orangey yellow color. Um, we focused in on the WinLink kit and then all of the other stuff that you uh, the auxiliary stuff that you may want to have we talked about go boxes vhf uhf go boxes that you could build out um we then started talking about events so this is a this is a picture from the ventura marathon from uh earlier this year uh during one of our our episodes our episodes all start at 1 p.m pacific time and so i was on station at about 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Uh, for for this race, my station closed. I had enough time to drive from my location, from the aid station I was working, back down to my back down to my home. Hop in the booth, and we pushed go, and we did a show about the event that I had just been at, including video that we had shot uh, there. We all talked about kind of the overall setup and and how you would support events. So that. That then started to, that kind of evolved to some of the other topics we would talk about. That evolved to Baker to Vegas. Now, this is a big race here in Southern California. It's a 120 mile relay race, oftentimes called, what is it, the longest uh, foot pursuit by police in, in the world? <laughs> 120 miles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so, How many teams, 22 teams. 20, no, two, not, no, no, 200. No, we had two. Yeah, there were over 230 this year. Yeah, 230 times 22 runners, runners. each team. Yeah, yeah, it's and a lot. alternates. It's a huge number. 
it's a huge, and it normally takes about 600 or so hams to support this race because through much of the course, there's no cell coverage. There's no other communication. So all four of us were, were working to support this. And, and we kind of got this bright idea, like, like let's bring Winlink involved with this somehow because we've been doing a ton of Winlink stuff. It's like, we, we got to get people involved. We got to do something, something different here. Um, so we wrote a proposal and submitted it to the COMEL for the race and it got approved. Um, and so what we did was we set up, the, the name changed, eventually it became the, uh, the Wave Talkers Solar Powered Gateway. We, I showed up about, uh, I showed up on, on Wednesday um, on the location where I was at. And Wednesday evening, we set up this solar powered gateway and it stayed on the air until Sunday morning. And we, we operated on 80 meters, 40 meters, 20 meters, and 17 meters. And we asked people to send us a win link check-in to our tactical call sign of wave talkers. Um, because we were all going to be supporting the race. So we didn't want all the traffic coming to all of us individually. So this is this is the solar powered gateway. Um, we, we used an ICOM 7300 as the primary station. We ran it in emergency mode. This, this was that we did several shows about just the setup of this. And we did a bunch of shows to also retool people to be able to participate in this. So we started with like, we did one episode of just get yourself up and running with WinLink. We did another episode of WinLink um, using Vara HF. And then we did an episode about the gateway itself and how it was configured. Um, we had a primary and a backup battery system that ran off of the, the, the Buddy Pole controllers here, the Buddy Pole Power Mini and the Power Plus. Um, BioNO sent us some, some really big batteries that were really great to, to be able to keep the thing up and running. So we had a universal power supply running. Um, you can see right on top of the 704, 7300 is a little teeny tiny gateway uh, PC. It's called a B-Link PC. They're like 140 bucks on Amazon. Um, it runs on 12 volts. We were able to plug it right into the system. Um, and we set this thing up and it worked. Like it worked really well. I was, we were really kind of shocked that it worked so well. We, we had solar panels um, outside, which kept all the batteries charged up and operating throughout the day. And let's look at a couple of the results. Um, we asked people if they could to check into us anytime over those, those couple of days, but we asked them to check into us um, via HF directly, VARA HF, if they could, and we published the frequencies and, and so forth that we were going to be operating on. If you couldn't reach us, via HF directly, then go ahead and send it via any means that you could via WinLink is what we asked people to do. And this is what happened. So in Southern California, um, if you see pins that are red, the red pins indicate people who checked in via Telnet. The pins that are blue are from stations that checked in via RF in some way. So it may have been VARA HF directly through the gateway. We had a lot of uh, stations that checked in via 80 meters NVIS uh, and 40 meters NVIS. Um, we had stations that checked in via packet, uh, via mesh, uh, via pack tour, um, you name it, stations checked in. And not just in Southern California, but like all across the US, uh, notice we've got friends out in, in Hawaii. We got friends over there in Puerto Rico, wow. Mexico, Canada. Wow. Over in Europe, we had people checking in. Um, there's even pins that didn't show up because there were some mapping issues that we had. Um, it's just, it was incredible. Um, we Here's the global view. So these, these two pins here, those are not accurate. Um, those were mistakes in uh, having a, plus or a minus in their uh, lat long coordinate. So those should really be over here in the US, but all the others are from their actual real locations. And that was, that was pretty crazy. And we've got other maps that show just the RF that came directly into the gateway and broken down by band and, and all that fun stuff. But well, look, we got our check-in from New Zealand, um, a check-in from Thailand that came in, uh, check-ins you know, just everywhere. And so that was, that was just so cool. So many people got really involved with this little project that we we started and started pushing out there. It was really exciting. Um, 
So we've done a few other types of episodes. We, every now and then, now roughly about every 10 or 12 episodes, um, we'll do what we call the WinLink coffee bar, belly up to the virtual coffee bar. Um, and it's kind of like, it's kind of turned into the WinLink help desk. Uh, so folks show up with their questions and uh, we just take questions the entire time. We'll, we'll put up a Google form so people can submit them ahead of time and then we'll work through those questions. So, so Chris, tell them the re real reason we do a coffee bar episode. Yeah. What, what's the real tell, reason? Tell them the real reason. Real reason. Come on. Sometimes, sometimes we can't come up with another. <laughs> yeah. We got nothing else. <laughs> but, but, but this last Sunday we did a coffee bar it was and, awesome. and in our, our participant in Bangor, Maine said, I learn more from you guys by mistake just by watching you. He had no idea about the 12 volt B link computer. Right. Yeah. Which is a great discovery for field emergency communications. And during during uh, every one of our episodes, we like I mentioned we'd use the same format. So we always actually have a QA session. We we generally bring people in, we do the everybody do a check-in so we can do the the mapping thing. It's kind of that make sure everybody gets some hands on with WinLink every single week. Mm -hmm. um, and we're really blown away. I'll, I'll show you the map of everybody who's checked in through all of the episodes here in just a second, and then mm -hmm. we'll narrow it down. Um, we, we do whatever the particular topic is that we're talking about for the week. And we do have a list, um, an email list. So if you wanted to join us, you can go to, go to wavetalkers.com. There's a join us link down in the footer and just, just sign up and you'll, you'll get a link. We can handle up to about 275 people in the zoom call. And then we live stream to YouTube, to Facebook, uh, to LinkedIn live. Uh, and also to to wave talkers. So even if we fill up uh, or when we fill up the the Zoom call, you can still watch us live, and then you can time shift it and watch it kind of any time. But as soon as we end our whatever our topic is that we're doing for the week, we have what we call the after party, and we turn off all the live streams, and then we open up the mics for everybody inside of the Zoom call, and we just take questions. Um, and we, we even we have people who literally start showing we, we live stream every Sunday starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, but we have people who are showing up an hour, hour and a half beforehand. Um, and depending on where we're at with our prep, we usually we, we definitely let people in usually about 15 minutes before, but sometimes a half hour or more. Um, and, you know, some depending on kind of where we're at with our with our setup for the show lots of questions start then but then after the show we're going one two sometimes three extra hours in the after party depending <laughs> on what what questions people have and and there's i mean let me the we've had people with we had, we had a, uh somebody up in idaho who was who was trying really hard to to send in traffic and they were we were troubleshooting troubleshooting and they finally they were cheering at the end when they finally were able to send their traffic yeah. and and get get their pin up on the map so it it worked it worked so well yeah uh, we, we we have chris we have birthed several gateways yep. uh our group from western canada for instance i think there are three gateways in western canada because we showed them how to do it because you do that in Ventura. Yeah. And so, so the, the solar powered gateway is now set up at my house. Um, and then we take it out into the field and we still will set it up. So we, David and I, um, KK68, um, headed down to San Diego. We did a, uh, a setup with Cal OES and, and help run a gateway for them for, for an event that was going on down there. Um, I'm working on, uh, solar powered gateway junior right now, which will be a little small solar powered gateway to take portable kind of parks on the air, soda style, more on that coming up. Um, but those, those are some of the things that we're playing around with. Um, and we're starting to make this kind of this transition turn right now, instead of just doing WinLink, which we're still doing tons of WinLink and all of the episodes are all up there. Um, we're, we're starting a new, uh, a new series right now um, starting up this Sunday for HF communications, because guess what's coming up in just a few weeks? Field day. And so a lot of people are going to want to get on HF and do things with, with, uh, with field day. So we're going to go through several episodes of talking about you know, just demystifying HF communications, moving towards being able to do 
um, Skywave communications, Envis, what kind of antennas, what gear do you need? How do you, how do you set up? So we're going to take on this same format that we've been doing with Winlink, and we're going to still keep all of the Winlink uh, training and embedded into what we're doing. Um, I see Bill in the chat, uh, AC7SR, uh, Centralia, Washington is a new gateway, thanks to our help. Thanks a lot, uh, Bill, for, for that as well. So we're, we're constantly kind of evolving what we're doing here with, with Wave Talkers. Um, the, the website is, uh, is wavetalkers.com. You can go on there. Um, let's, check, let's check the map and just kind of see where we're at right now with folks. So let's see, this is on number two. Um, now I'm gonna do a quick check just with Telnet to see how we're doing. And yeah, there's a there's a lot more traffic coming in. I'm gonna uncheck all, I'm just gonna uncheck two of these messages right now and do download the checked items. I'm gonna download all the rest of them via Telnet. And uh, I wanna do a quick, quick little show of when I say we walk people through the entire chain, I want to kind of just show that a little bit here. So instead of doing Telnet for this, this last check, I want to switch over to show you a three up shot. So if you, if you look at the, the tile that's above me, that's my laptop. That's my Microsoft Surface Go that I'm using. So this is my, my little station that I'm on. The upper right is my gateway, which is literally in the next room and the antenna is up in the attic. Um, and then I've got my ICOM 705, which is right here. And that's connected to my Surface Go. So when we walk people through the process, we really like to make it so that people can really see the entire thing. So instead of doing a Telnet check, I'm gonna do VARA FM and go ahead and open the session. And if the demo God's with me, uh, it'll open up the VARA FM. And so now I've got all three of the primary components on screen. So let me go ahead and start this little session. I'll turn up the, turn up the volume so you can hear it as it's going. But I click start on the, on the, um, on the station here. You can see the radio is transmitting. It's sending its signal up to the gateway, which is uh, over there on the right side. Um, and it's doing the back and forth with VARA. It should pop up a little thing here in just a second saying, hey, you've got some messages. There are those two messages. Now I'll go ahead and download those. And, and now they'll come back through the entire chain of how all of that, um, that traffic is, is working through the pathway. Oh, look, we've got a cool little, uh, a cool pattern. We got a, a 16 by 16, uh, a four by four grid. Ooh, level five. I must be close to the gateway. I mean, level I'm, five, I'm Matia, level five. And feet away from it. Um, so, I mean, these are the, some of the demos that that we do uh, with uh, with these uh, sessions that we do. And in fact, one of the early sessions when we were first starting out, I showed, hey, here's this problem with, with VARA. My signal isn't working very well. And these guys used me as an example and just troubleshot the heck out of my setup. And that's all online. In fact, you can, you can watch that episode. There we go, the, the mail came in. Let me, let me bring up, I'm gonna go back over to just the gateway. I'm gonna bring up uh, Wave Talkers website real quick. Um, if you go on to to Wave Talker, so we've got all of the live shows that's here. If you click on if you click on live, they're also on our YouTube channel and our Facebook channel, and they're on all of those. So you can come here. You can see all of the previous episodes that that we've done. You can click on them and watch the full episode. But for we got our start doing this with with Winlink itself, and so if you come up to resources. Here at the top, you'll notice over here, and we're, we're continuing to build this out. We just added the solar power gateway uh, link, but here's the WinLink link right here in digital operations. And it's kind of developed into a full course. We've got the, the core content that we, that we started off with. And then all of these links here open up to individual videos. So you click on, let's say you're, you're interested in learning about the signal link. You click on that, you come down here and there's a dedicated just two minute intro video by one of us 
Uh, this one happens to be by KK6DA about the signal link. You come down a little bit further and here is W0DHG and he's walking through how do you choose the right signal link? How do you identify that USB part number for your specific radio so you can go through and, and get that ordered uh, and be able to configure it? We've got videos in here for sound modem and so forth. Um, tuning Vara FM, I believe this one right here is the episode uh, where yes, this is this is actually those guys troubleshooting my setup and and walking through the mistakes that I was making, and we did it all on camera during the show, and then we just cut that down into a little snippet and put it on here. So all that material is all kind of organized in one spot, and it's it's all free. We're you know it's all it's all just up there. Um, a lot of people have asked us how how do we support doing all of this? We've got a buy me a coffee thing, and that helps pay for some of the infrastructure. But otherwise. It's all just out there. It really started as a passion project, and we're just thrilled that it's helping uh, a lot of people uh, out there um, to do this. So, um, okay. yeah, I'd like to, I'd really like to share a perspective on this. When we yeah, sure. start, when we started this whole thing, uh, David and Dan and I, uh, we started training um, and bringing folks up to speed. I think the real um, passion that we had, um, David and Dan and I, and, and Chris joined along uh, eventually, was understanding what MCOM was all about and understanding um, the tool uh, WinLink. And, and it's not just an application, as Mike would tell you, or Oliver. It is a suite of tools. And we were able to figure out very early on, it was clear to me almost immediately when Oliver showed us this in 2019, that this was a game changer. It was not about the technology of connecting to your signal link and going HF or UHF or VHF. It really was about the suite of forms and the ability to send um, information that my served agency needed in the times of disaster when they looked to us to help support them, hopefully, and be able to provide them um, efficiently, quickly, and professionally and the the technology stuff that we mostly cover in our classes every week um, uh, supplements that. But really, it's really about this suite of software that Steve and Mike and the rest of the development team have built together to allow you to essentially on your PC for free download um, a mini EOC that you can set up, stand up anywhere and be operational to support whatever your mission is within a very, very short amount of time. Yep. The, the stuff that we focused on over the last, I don't know, we've been doing this six or eight months now, has been about getting amateur radio operators up and running with the technology, because that's important and it takes time and it's challenging and not always super clear. But the the main focus has always been driving back to how do we, you know, how do the 51 of us that are on the call right now go back and support our communities, our, our city, our state, uh, and beyond in, in times of need. And that's really, really been the push. That's why we started it. One of our, our basic concepts too was, we realized that not everybody is going to be able to set up WinLink with a radio. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a wide range of skill sets in Aries Northeast and ACS, the two groups I'm in, we have extremely sharp tech people, and we have folks that are not very sharp. And we want to include everybody. And we sort of came to the understanding that not everybody needs to know how to hook their radio up to WinLink, but every MCOM operator should know how to operate WinLink. If we plop them down at the EOC, uh, my ACS group serves the LA City EOC, if we plop somebody down at the desk, the WinLink desk at the EOC, they should know how to send a form, how to receive a form, how to check in. So that's sort of the core basic thing. And we tried to reach mm -hmm. all levels of operators, not just the tech guys. We could do a one day class and, and the really sharp guys will pick it up and run with it. But we need to be able to get all of our members working on WinLink, and that's sort of how we've and that's how we addressed started this and that's how we started and and our early sessions that that we did were going to be 
two or three sessions and we ended up going four or five because we had sessions where we worked, you know, with individual, you know, ACS and Aries members on, okay, now you need to share your screen and now you need to set this and now you need to set that. And we get feedback in the chat saying, oh, that totally solved my problem. And that's why we continue to do it. And, you know, again, we started off with two dozen people in Southern California and, you know, Chris just showed you the map, you know, we're, we're footprinting in at least, uh, four continents now. Yeah. And, and we, and we had no <laughs> idea where we were going when we started. No, I mean, no, we did this, not. this, it was really, I mean, COVID really pushed it because it brought zoom to us. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, as, as COVID goes away, hopefully zoom's going to be with us and yep. this type of training, uh, rat packs, another great example of that. It is, um, it, 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 it took us from our little fiefdoms of our local knowledge and allowed us to expand to folks all over the country. This is how we do it. It's different, but this is how we do it. And we gather all that information in and it makes us all better by far. So, so one thing we're dedicated to is operating in the ICS structure and Windlink makes that so easy. Look at those templates. Just look at them all. You have every ICS template form you would ever need to serve your served agency. How amazing is that? How forward thinking is that? It's a pretty amazing product. Now, yeah, I, it, I, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I mentioned, let's look at the map and I downloaded the messages. But we uh, didn't actually look at the map. Yeah, we'll, we'll get, we'll that get up. there. <laughs> we, we will get there totally. All right, what, what, what do you, what do you, what do you I, I, I was just, I, you know, what I just wanted to say was, um, honestly, the, the three of us started out really born out of the fact that we were all stuck at home and, and we wanted to push forward our organizations, whether it was Aries or, or DCS or ACS, um, which, which we kind of all kind of play with. And, and we saw the opportunity to do that. Just, just like the Rat Pack, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I don't tune in live every session, but I watch maybe a third or half of the Absolutely. sessions and I have learned yeah. a ton. And um, as much as this last two and a half plus years have been really hard and everybody's stuck at home and not doing this and that, I think our groups, whether it's, you know, the three or the four of us or, the Rat Pack or other organizations that have taken the opportunity to move this forward, it, you know, it's, it is huge. It is a great opportunity for us to, to continue to move forward. And I don't see this going away. No, no. clearly there is a need. Yep. And when, when, when you put out the plaque and you get 275 people plus responding, Oh my God, what did we create Chris? Which is exactly what, what we thought at the time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Be, each, care, each be careful comment, for what you wish for. It kept just growing. Um, <laughs> all right, let's let's see how we actually did mm -hmm. tonight. Um, so let me remove myself and then bring myself back in. And we'll jump back over to here, move myself down to the little transmogrify corner. Let me do one more check just in case. I think that's such a cool video thing, by the way. Somebody else might have sent in a check in. You need like a swoosh sound when he does that. Yeah, yeah. I got to add some sound effects. Swoosh. So, so the way that you map this, if you're not familiar with, inside of Winlink, um, in the toolbar, there's this little globe icon right here. You just click on the little globe, and it opens up this maps uh, and CSV slash KML files and forms. Now, this in order for this to work. Your account, your WinLink account has to receive the emails. That's why we have you send them to all four of us um, so that all four of us now could, could do this. And we ran into uh, an issue with this a couple of weeks ago during one of the, my show, or during one of our shows where my laptop ran out of power in the middle of the show and we had to throw a lateral to, to one of the other guys who then just brought up their screen, shared it, and was able to share the map. So easy so, to do. It's very, very easy to, to be able to do. And when you receive any of the WinLink forms that are mappable, they're all the ones in that mapping section, here in the select from, you can click down the little drop down, and all of those are forms that I've received and they're all in my copy of, of WinLink. 
all that traffic is there. So I'm just going to select the WinLink check-in form, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to display the map. Pretty cool. Look at that. We've got a good amount of, of people. Let me blow this out to full screen and see how we actually did. There we go. This is the, the people who have checked in just in the past couple of hours of, of time. So we've got a station in New Zealand. I did kind of seed this out. I sent an email. I sent our email notification out to our Wave Talkers group earlier today and said, hey, send in a check-in tonight. But a lot of these are also you guys who are live here on the on the call with us right now. Um, and and they're all they're from all over the place. And what's cool about this is you can move your mouse over these and you'll get a little pop up that'll tell you who that station is. Um, you can move up here and you can see the various different people. There's there's Phil K K O four L uh, move out here. W H six E A O. Aloha. Aloha. If you click on that, it brings up with the message. So aloha and good evening, guys. Yeah, mahalo. <laughs> mahalo. Thank you very much for, for sending your check-in. Now, just the mapping is kind of fun. It's kind of cool. And there are so many ways that you can use this in your EOC. But one of the like super cool things you can do is you come up here to the set filters and you have all of these filters. So right now we're just looking at the last six hours worth of, of data. Uh, of people who have sent in check-ins and you can sort these and say, okay, show me uh, anybody who checked in via uh, Telnet. And I want you to color their pin red. Where's the red? There's a red in here somewhere. Where's right. the bottom? There it is, red. And we say save and you can see Whoa. what jumps out at you right away is there's a lot of people who checked in via RF in some kind of way. There are a bunch of people who checked in via Telnet, like we asked you to do, but people who check in earlier get that practice with their radio. They're able to, to do that. Let me uh, let me disconnect that. Let me change that filter. I'm going to uh, turn that back to uh, just uh, ignore. And I'm going to go ahead real quick and just change this to zero. Now, at the top, this top filter is how many hours back would you like to go? Would you like to see the data that you have available to you? And if you set it to zero, it makes it unrestricted. It just says, go through your inbox, show me all the messages that you've received. So if we click save now, there you can see a Whoa. better representation of the number of stations who are joining us every week um, or have joined us over time. We've got stations uh coming up here in in finland oh look at that oscar hotel eight sierra tango november hi julian julian, julian. julian. thank you julian you check in. um <laughs> many of you are maybe familiar with some of julian's uh youtube videos if you are not go check them out they are amazing everything's in the, in the snow um We've we've got regular folks uh, here in Austria and Germany who are joining us every single week. Um, we've got more stations coming in in the Caribbean, out in Hawaii, uh, and kind of all over. So it's wicked, wicked cool. And there's a lot of exercises. Go check out episode eight where we show you that spot rep report and all of the kind of exercises that you can do with this mapping tool. Um, but let's, you know, one, one quick thing before we wrap up, because I know we're getting close to time here. Let's say you're at the EOC and you need to hand this data off to someone else. You can close the map and you can come here and you can export the form data, all of those data that just came in. You can export that out as a CSV, put it on a little jump drive, use your sneaker net to walk it over to the, the person at the EOC who's running the GIS system and you can hand off all of the data that's just come in via WinLink and help provide additional information to uh, whatever is the, the uh, issue that's going on. So with that, uh, what, we, what we like to do is we wrap up uh, all of our shows is uh, we bring everybody up back, uh, back up to screen very quickly for a quick little uh, round robin if there are any other uh, thoughts before we, we wrap up and we move on into the Q&A session. So W0DHG, any thoughts from you, sir? Yeah, I mean, I think that the the biggest takeaway and the thing that I keep circling back to all the time is, you know, and challenge each and every one of you out there, whether you've used WinLink or not, to really remember it's a suite of tools. The power 
isn't as much in the ability to send an email over RF or Telnet. The power is in the forms. The power is in what your served agency needs. And I would say, go play with the forms, familiarize yourself to all of the ICS forms, all of the local forms. And if they don't have the local forms that you need, um, it's super easy to build them on your own. They've actually gone to the point where they've created a document that walks you through the process. So if you already have a form that your served agency expects you to deliver in times of emergency, sit down with somebody that's somewhat web savvy or send a note to some of the group here or some of the other WinLink development folks. They'll help you build out the form that will look as good, if not better, than what you're expected to hand over. And um, you can simplify your world and, and just show up being a better you know, uh, support to your community. And you can't overemphasize the importance of handing a form that they're familiar with. Yep. In a time of disaster, the last thing they have time to do is figure out a new form. Yep. So by being able to hand that form over in the, the format that they're used to is, is huge. One, one quick shout out to, uh, to Dan and our 6D. He, he was the pioneer uh, of, of the four of us who, who took on the task of setting up a gateway first and <laughs> figured all this gateway stuff out, wondering, is anybody going to use this thing? And he set it up in the middle of the San Fernando Valley, and it's become one of the most popular gateways supporting how many million people? I think three, about three million people, and we did not have... Well, we had one gateway that was out of the San Fernando Valley, but in a, an opportune location. But uh, I set mine up and, and David set one up within a few weeks. And we've got three or four others now. Uh, so we have a lot of options and, and it's been fun. And I, I could not have done it without help from uh, several guys that really helped uh, get it going and figure it out. And I'm still dealing with issues with it, but that's that's being a sysop, uh, you know, you, you, uh, it mostly runs just fine, but you get into little problems and I'm there now. <laughs> well, Dan, we, we, you know, we all do. It takes a village. It really does take a village. It takes a group of individuals. And I think the four of us are probably that kind of group. And, uh, we've all been stuck with this stuff in the past and we are now pretty much past that. And we can help other people do that. And that's in the spirit of public service of amateur radio. Uh, well, shout well, out, sure. shout out to uh, uh, Aries LAX, all of these people experiment with, uh, with Winlink and uh, even betas for Winlink at LAX Northeast. Uh, you know, the, the development team will send out uh, an experimental uh, Winlink update and we'll break it or not <laughs> and that's fun so there we go that uh, that kind of brings us to the end we've kind of walked you through the the two big phases phase one was pretty small uh it was basically just a passion project of mine and then these guys found and saw a need for these windlink classes and uh we helped bring them to life uh online to lots of people uh, across the world and we're continuing to do that. And we encourage each of you, if you, if you haven't, uh, to join us. We, we live stream every Sunday starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you can go to wavetalkers.com. Down on the bottom of the page, there's a join us link. And uh, sign up there. You'll get the email that has the, the link to our, uh, to our Zoom session. If that fills up, you're welcome to watch it on any of our channels. So with that, uh, we'll say thanks for the, the main portion of the, of the talk here and uh, open it up for, for Q&A. Victor's got hey. his hand up. Victor's got his hand up, yep. Good evening, good evening from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I've got a question and then I have a follow on for that. Is the WinLink open and is it regularly monitored? Is it open? It's um, anyone is able to, um, <laughs> I don't know why I keep disappearing. Um, the, uh, the wind link traffic is all, it's, it's an open protocol, uh, as far as people can see the traffic that's, that's going on. Um, it's amateur radio. Nothing is encrypted on the, the wind link portion of that. 
Um, but uh, what was the other part of your question there? The other part of it is the just sort of thought to the whole thing is talking about Winlink and the global connection that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And far be it for me, I've only been in am amateur radio for about four years now, but I will tell you it pays to follow. And I don't know how many here know the story or remember the story, but the, the truth about Tiananmen Square in China came to light because of the fax machine. When people on the ground in China were sending information to the world, it was the only way they could get that message out because the Chinese press was shut down. There was no information. My point being is that we may be the years, when link may be the years that first becomes aware of something of any nature going on. It could have been the Tonga for that matter, or whatever. I'm just saying, we're the years yeah. of the war. Here's like, a great, here's a great example of, of how that actually comes to play. You know, uh, one of the things Al Oliver Dully was with us earlier and left and, uh, Greg's here, and, and I will salute you, Greg, for being the awesome operator and creator of all these forums. But uh, the Winlink development teams worked with the USGS um, to create a, a Did You Feel It form, um, which you know is important to us here, all up and down. And you, we we talked about Cascadia rising before the uh, show started. Um, we have the ability as, as amateur radio operators from the middle of the storm of the of the earthquake as it happens. If we have battery power and we have the ability to get our radios on the air, we can send a did you feel it from the middle of the earthquake and the USGS will get it and report it and know instantly or very shortly um, the intensity of the information around what happened. Um, it, it, there are lots of ways where we can step in and provide information whether or not the regular services are, are available in your community. Um, and I think that's a great point. And I think um, I, I was wishing I would get more information out of maybe um, uh, Eastern Europe right now uh, via Winlink or other sources about what's going on. And I'll kind of leave it at that. Well, I can comment <laughs> on that real quick, if you would, please. I did see the message from ARRL that we basically have a blackout on Eastern Europe. Yeah. We do not want to be divulging anybody's information or locations or any of that. So, uh, as dedicated operators, we're uh, maintaining radio silence. Thanks yeah. and have a great evening. Thank you. Dan, uh, I see you've got a question. What's up? Uh, well, I wanted to comment uh, hey. about uh, part <laughs> 97.113 uh, obscuring data. Amateur radio does not allow the obscuring of data. So we make a provision uh, by making our compression algorithms and what have you available to anybody. And uh, so on amateur radio, uh, anybody uh, can really copy uh, Winlink, any of the protocols. However, amateur radio is not the largest part of Winlink. And there are uh, defense and civil uh, Winlink systems in our country and in others that uh, do have encrypted uh, uh, pro encrypted processes. Uh, we're just now uh, encrypting the shares, the Department of Homeland Security CISA NCC shares system with the government standard AES 256 which we were provided at no cost. Um, so we are encrypting those transmissions. So to the gentleman who has questions, uh, amateur radio uh, has uh, many tentacles and some of them are to assist as transport layers for uh, processes that may not be subject to public scrutiny or observation. That's it. I'm Thank pretty you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Dan, Whiskey Lima 7, Charlie Oscar Oscar. I see you've had your hand raised. What's up? 
You guys have been blowing me away since the day I first heard the phrase wave talker. <laughs> and there, there's a lot more people that are watching the videos <laughs> than are checking in. So um, your energy is more contagious than COVID-19. We in try. How long, huh? in terms you, of how long your you. legs are going to be <laughs> as, 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 as your all-inclusive um, need to be didactic uh, expands wind link to many more amateurs. Um, if a uh, wind was the uh, trusty C-130, you go to the JDO model, somebody figured out they could strap to the wings. Um, and I can't tell you how much positive feedback I've gotten. Tell you the truth, I, have, I, I schedule you every Sunday afternoon and life intervenes. <laughs> so I resort to watching your um, recordings, which are invaluable. And when you get to, there's a, you know, how do I say it? There's a core of people and Steve is being modest. Uh, he's not saying nearly as much as he could about the value of Winlink on amateur radio frequencies. And, and the secret there is it's entirely transparent interoperability with shares, which is, as he mentioned, the U.S. government's way of providing secured radio. Uh, I almost said only, but that's a no-no. Secured radio communications. Yep. Um, making use of the amateur radio service and willing and capable volunteers. So you're there with the, uh, you know, willing and capable part big time and uh, bigger than you think, I imagine. So keep it up. Don't stop. Stay healthy. Stay safe. We, we thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank, you Dan. thank you. Thank you so Any, much. Thank you. And anyone watching, if, you know, if you go onto our YouTube channel or any of our social media channels, do the whole like, like subscribe thing. So it will actually get elevated uh, with, with people. It's still a fairly new, fairly small channel. And so um, all of those things really help. I made two other notes. Yeah, go ahead. I, I got to reprimand you. One of you said, Winlink has all the IC forms you need. Uh, there is a lot of them. It does not uh, have okay, all of them. Okay. It has a lot of them. It does not have all of them. Poor Greg. Greg who is valiant and dedicated. Yeah, be, and, be and careful. Her. You know, we, we did say, what would you like to add? And, you know, they're very protective of that stuff. Which form is missing for you? There. They're very discreet. No, I, I, I have just been in the unfortunate situation and having to do a complete proper IAP. And yeah. there, there's some, there's some I, I can't remember all the forms that are in an IAP. Uh, but when that discussion came up, Oliver said, I think it was last night, uh, that there were everything we needed to do as amateur radio volunteers which is probably absolutely true. So it's, yeah. I'm just being pick a unit about the English language. Yeah, well, uh, essentially you want to create a 217 ICS 217 for your group. And that's all the frequencies you would ever use. And from that you derive for your exercise in ICS 205. And on that, you can create your IAP, the goals of the exercise, and there you go. You, you and, and, Dan, and Dan, as a as a um, um, aspiring emergency manager, I get I get what you're saying. There's um, a lot of forms outside of the communications world that that could be included that aren't that you would see uh, you'd find in a in an EOC or at a incident command center. Someday. Uh, another thing too is that there is a whole slew of forms that have been gleaned out of uh, the regular general release that are available on the winlink.org website. And um, if you look at our reference material, uh, I did a video on installing non-standard forms uh, from that library, and there's a ton of them. And for you, they may be very useful. The Winlink development team just felt that they were not either used often enough or general um, interest enough to include them in the regular release, which had become too cumbersome because of its size, but they and, are there. And to, to address our previous question, all Winlink, well, I'm, I'm saying all, and I'm, I'm a little half trepidation about that, but I think 
virtually all wind link messages transmitted over amateur radio frequencies are visible on the wind link message view viewer. Yeah, so, absolutely, one hundred percent. Nothing is private. Only the U.S. stations. Oh, say that again, Steve. Only the U.S. stations. Because Got of the it. FCC. Okay. okay. Yep. Right. Okay. And um, if you're interested, and this is sort of off topic, but if you get your a ten dollar a year subscription to Flight Radar Twenty Four, mm -hmm. um, you can select you know list of most sought um, call signs for aviation traffic over Ukraine and all all of the secret stuff that's going on there in terms of intelligence gathering when they're in the vicinity of commercial traffic lanes they do broadcast ADSB and it's kind of you know so you can see the um, uh, various types of uh, intelligence gathering aircraft on the borders in oval patterns almost seven by 24 and when stuff heats up on the Black Sea there's some of it sort of paralleling the commercial traffic um, lanes to the south. Yeah, so, that's, that, that's interesting, Dan, but let's get back to the subject here. Yeah, I, I'm done. I'm just, uh, I, I want these people to know how important they are beyond those who are actually communicating with them. Thank, Thank you, Big D. You're Thank there for a reason. You keep me in check. <laughs> Do we have any other questions from folks who are, who are still on the call? What was that but, site again, Dan? Uh, Flight Dan. Aware 24. Low D, Dan, you want to put that in the chat, please? So I have a question for all the audience members is, um, are your groups embracing this as, as much as we are? And if they're not, how do, how do we, as a, as a group that's dedicated to training this, you know, engage with you and get you guys up to speed so that you can set up gateways and you can train your members and we can all be using this. That, that's my question. Great question. Well, I can say this from my side, from what I get, and I get a lot of input, trust me. If WinLink has taken off all over the place, here in Idaho, which we've been kind of donor forever because we don't have disasters here. <laughs> disasters when the, when the sheriff doesn't show up to work. But, uh, you know, uh, it has taken off here. There's, uh, the counties are embracing it. The, the government, the local and state is, is uh, embracing it. And Idaho is far from, it is all over the place. There's tons of uh, people doing um, training on it. It is really going on. It's good stuff. And it's because of this, because of what you guys are doing and the people that come on here and talk about their success stories, who give uh, instructions, et cetera. The presentations, where you're doing it, keep doing it. Steve, you want to take it away in 6RHS? Hey, my home state, you Cornhusker. Hold on. You're, we're you're not muted. having any, we're not getting any audio from you. You're muted. His he's mic is muted, open, but, but he's not. Check which mic you've got selected. Nope, not yet. Oh. Someone else have a question or comment while we're waiting for him? Victor. Uh, yeah, for uh, Snohomish County, Washington, Washington State. Uh, I think we've embraced it with about 2,000 arms. Uh, people really like it. People are really pushing it. The Snohomish County Department of Emergency Management is doing everything they can to get links, nodes, whatever we need out there. Uh, we had three of them, I think, that were recently removed because the original uh, installation was in violation of some certain uh, state park rule or something license fees were not paid. Mm -hmm. And so it was either pay them or have your stuff removed and they were removed. So that's always a challenge for any kind of network. Uh, we're always building, we're always looking for new sites. And we're always um, we're always pushing the envelope up here. We 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 want it. We we're trying to make it a go to if at all possible. Yeah, I, one of the things is as somebody who's brand new at setting up a a gateway, um, a lot of my own 
fear, uncertainty, and doubt. FUD was 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 really a factor in how long it took me to get around to actually setting this up. My my colleague David WZRDHG likes to say, just set it up with yes, the crap you've got in your garage. Hello, hello. hello. Um, but uh, we hear you now. We can hear um, you now, Steve. And one of the one of the things that I, I kind of discovered with this is it's really not that expensive to get set up. The, the gateway that I'm using, especially on the two meter side, um, I've got the Alinko DR135. I think that's what, $175. Uh, the the B-Link uh, PC that I'm using as the dedicated PC uh, was like $140 on Amazon. It's nothing special. It's nothing super fast. Uh, there's a link to it on, on the Solar Power Gateway page. Um, it does just fine for a gateway. And then one of those little, uh, it was $50, uh, was it the RMA board? Uh, is that rim, the right? Rim the board. board. You'll the get, rim you'll board. get it right eventually. I'll get that, uh, eventually I'll get eventually. this right. That's why I type stuff as opposed to, to saying it. Um, and that was, that was $50 for the interface. Everything else was all the 12 volt stuff that I already had just lying around. So it's not really that expensive. And so, and even for the antenna. So I, I know there's a lot of people who are in HOAs and they're, they're not able to like put a big antenna up or anything like that. Even though I'm not in a restricted area, my antenna for my gateway is in my attic and, and I'm able to serve an area of about 300,000 people here in the Los Angeles or in the uh, Ventura uh, Oxnard plane that's that's down here. So you really don't need a huge amount of infrastructure to be able to help support your community and, and set up a gateway uh, to be able to do that. Um, Steve, uh, now we got your mic back. What's up? Okay, is it working okay now? It's yeah. sound great. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm in a, a an isolated pocket in Nebraska. Uh, mm -hmm. All the population in Nebraska is over in Omaha and Lincoln. And then there's this little panhandle uh, area of Scotts Bluff. We have no packet. Um, we are, we're just isolated. Uh, the only way, if, if, if we're at the edge of Tornado Alley, so there are, is a possibility a tornado could knock things out. They're building a new uh, communication system out here. And our emergency manager is also a ham. Mm -hmm. and the, sheriff's, yeah, the sheriff's department and the EM came to me rather than me having to go to them. They came to me and says, we need Aries to ramp up. Yeah. So they, they, they're spending $35,000 to build us a new EOC. And we, I, I'm, all I've done is I've, I've got my group. I the, the, It's a small town. I've got 12 members in Aries. Five of them are active, including myself. And um, there's only so much I can get them to do. We're building go kits uh, with, with this, uh, with these new radios we'll be getting. And I want to put WinLink into that, but I guess I, I don't know. I've never I, we I've never been able. I, I don't have a, a I only have a seventy three hundred, so I don't have a UHF radio hooked up to a, a computer. I don't have a, 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 a signal link for that. I guess I'd have to get one. We'll get one for the EOC. I guess you what we have would, a seventy three hundred. Yeah, I have a seventy three hundred. That's hooked up to the radio. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, but but w when we get our go kits out, they're going to be on. Uh, well, they're going to have a an HF radio and a UHF VHF radio. I'm assuming I'm going to want to put the UHF VHF radios on um, on the TNC so we can do a wind link message back and forth if we have to go to a, an evacuation center or something. Um, and I guess we would do that with the, with FM. Um, do, if I set up a gateway, mm -hmm. do I set up a gateway at the EOC for both FM and HF? Steve, you uh, you, you have you have presented a perfect Oxcom situation. And you have a committee of how many people would we have here? 38, a committee of 38 people who can analyze that situation. And uh, I, I would say you definitely in the panhandle of Nebraska need an HF component that you can talk to Denver, Omaha, us in Los Angeles, the Cheyenne, Washington Omaha, state right. people. You really need that kind of component, but you might have something that you can talk locally to. So for instance, the EOC to every spotter in the community that might look for tornado damage, that's a VHF UHF thing, but definitely the master plan needs to have an HF component. Yeah, right. That's here's, a, yeah, here's the, um, if if let me see if I can get the uh, my my screen to now show up for, for everybody. I'm just going to pick myself back up here for a second. Um, so I'm going to play a short little video. I, this is my portable setup 
that I use literally in the park just down the street. And I recorded this just about two days ago. Um, so this is my ICOM 705, the little Surface Go. I've got a little tiny battery on here. This literally is solar powered Gateway Junior. I just haven't uh, fully uh, fully turned it on as a gateway. Um, but I'll, so I'll play on the, the video. I don't think the audio should be coming through. But I'm sending windling traffic using through a station about 500 miles away on the 705 using a mag loop. F loop 3. And so 10 watts, right? 10 watts? Yeah, I was doing 10 watts here. Eight no, watts eight, eight, power. eight and a half watts of power um, is what I was what I was actually using here. So you really don't need a whole lot. Um, what I'm finding, and we're going to do some shows about this. So next, this coming week's show is about demystifying HF. The following one is going to be Skywave. We're going to be setting up some buddy hexes and, and playing Skywave with, with people checking in. We'll have the solar powered gateway set up. And then after that, we're going to do some Envis episodes. Um, I've been using a mag loop, the, uh, the Chameleon F loop 3.0. And also the tactical delta loop. The tactical delta loop from Chameleon is an awesome. It uh, is and, amazing. It's so really, really good um, for for doing passing wind link traffic, and and that's what we used um, down in San Diego. Um, actually, out in in the desert at Baker de Vegas, yeah. when we first showed up, the first antenna that I deployed was the tactical delta loop, and that allowed me to get the gateway up on uh, four different bands, 80, 40, 20, and 17 meters in about 15 minutes from opening the case and, and having that on the air. And then little by little, I added a, a spider beam with a, a, an N9TAX Slim Jim. And then I put out the, um, the two meter radio and I just turned that on. And then once that was on, then the gateway was handling the traffic from both the two meter side uh, for local traffic that was covering the stages around where we were and it was doing HF and we were doing NVIS the way that it was set up so we could cover the entire uh, the entire 8600 square miles of, of space um, and and much further we had a lot of our stations from Ventura County checked in via NVIS and they were about 200 and 200 or so miles away. So, so Steve, little, 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 little you know, we're, we're really lucky oh. in our MCOM experience in L.A. County. We're we're a county of 10 million people. So we have a whole lot of gateways that are connected. And we've talked about that. But I understand in the middle of Nebraska, well, the panhandle of Nebraska, you don't have that. So HF, you've no, got to no. think about HF 200 miles away, 300 miles away. So, North, south, right. east, west, so, Kansas point, City, Omaha, Denver. Point right, that's, that's, here's a here's that, a here's a counterpoint to this, and just to, just consider this other part, which is when we started, David, Dan, and I started in the San Fernando Valley. There were zero gateways at yeah, all, yeah, and and nothing. And what Dan set up was FM. And Steve, if you if you can get a a good internet connection that you think is reliable and and some backup power, which could be a, a UPS for a hundred bucks at Costco or Sam's Club, um, you could put up a reliable FM gateway. And, you know, if you build it, they'll come. And if you start training the local operators to use the FM gateway that they can actually talk to yeah. for um, the cost of, you know, in my, my, um, my vernacular crap from your garage, <laughs> which is, you know, an FM radio and a signal link or, or an audio card to get to it and a small antenna. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars to get on HF. No, you don't. It will start your program off. And I would say, counterpoint to my colleagues, and I respect them all very greatly, I would say start your, start your distribution, start your process FM, and I'd be happy to help you. Reach out to me, my call sign at ARL.net start there and it will build into something bigger because that's how we did it in our part of los angeles yeah um, okay. remember that that um particularly vara fm is a weak signal format it does yeah. not take um i mean I, i've made connections where i could barely hear the responding yep. station but yet i had a usable connection so just because you have challenges doesn't mean it won't work uh i well, connect one of the best connections i have is in a place called agua dulce which is 
over a mountain range right and looking at it on the map there's no way i connected them but through the voodoo of rf i have a great connection to them it's one of the most reliable connections i have so you know don't don't discount it until you tried it well see yeah. i i'm not i'm not really discounting it because I like I said I got I got five active participants, but I think once we get our EOC built and we mm -hmm. have to start putting our go kits together and everything, hopefully some of these guys will have a little more interest. But yeah. we're all, all a bunch of old men, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I resemble but, that remark. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and see, and 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 I'm a retired truck driver. The only reason why I'm the EC is because the retired EC who's now 82 years old said I'm 80. I can't do this anymore. You just retired. Guess what? And and it just happened. And so I'm learning this, but the thing is, when we go set up, you know, what we're assuming here, this is what Tim, uh, my emergency manager, Tim, I don't know if I said his name, Tim Newman, KA4CKR, is also the county's emergency manager. Mm -hmm. He's from Kansas. Um, so um, he, you know, the way he wants, the way they want is that they're more in, uh, interested in Skywarn, and we'll do that as much. As, that'll probably be 99.9% .9 of what we do yeah. Because, yeah. because we don't have that much bad uh, weather that comes through here. However, it could. But we're going to set up go kits in case that we have to do a uh, um, a, uh, in a, a, a evacuation center. Yeah. But the rest of the time, it's just going to be Skywarn. I have people with APR. I just got APRS. We have no packet. And I've been trying to get them to at least get uh, do the Windlink Thursdays. And, and I've got uh, four, four or five guys that are doing that. So Windlink is actually, to me, it's pretty darn simple. And I think those guys are kind of getting the hang of it pretty well. I want to hook up my radios and my go kits will have a 718 and a, uh, a, a, a dual bander of some kind that we'll, we'll hook up with the TNs with the, with the signal link. And then we have capabilities with the laptop because Tim will supply us with the laptops mm -hmm. with the computer and the radios and the T and the, and the sound card device. We've got all kinds of possibilities. We can go Vera. We can go uh, NBMS with the uh, digipeters. I mean, with the uh, FL digi. Um, but I, I, I kind of like Winlink. I like I like the fact that we can get we, if we need to get a hold of Lincoln for resource requests, I can contact Sweden and he'll get the email. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's Absolutely. a great, and and that's a great you, thing about Winlink. Yeah. Is that yeah. And, you know, you might you might connect with some hams in Denver or Lincoln right. or Omaha. You guys could have a direct connection. Well, and see, I, we just had a Skywarn training I, yesterday I with the emergency him. management. Hello, excuse yep. me, I need to interject. Hey, we're, running, we're running long, so can yeah. we uh, speed this up so we get some more people? Sure. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll end it real quick. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I guess I'm just learning to get this together, and I'm thinking the only problem I was having was was Vera FM. Uh, do the speeds that you have with Vera HF when you buy the license? Uh, do you have speeds with Vera FM or is it a single speed, uh, you know, cause you have speed. speeds on HF. You have speeds and it's, it's also dependent on, on the connection that you have. The, right. The but I mean, do you have to pay the for the extra? Yes. You, you do, but you buy one license, you buy it once and then it, it unlocks all of Vara for, for you. So we, we have a video that talks about that on the, on the resources page. Oh, I want to see that one. Okay, well yeah, got done. Okay. Com, click on resources, win yeah, link or there. email us. Or email. Larry. Yeah. Larry, what's up, man? Larry six BKP. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm a high desert DEC, and it seems as though that uh, I didn't realize that you guys were not uh, working uh, the Baker to Vegas. I'm also the uh, stage fifteen uh, comm manager, so I think uh, maybe you got to get a little, little bit more um, communicative, so we know what more going on. So us people up here in the high desert. You know, you were talking about uh, Aquadelsi. Well, that's still, uh, we're still a lot further than that. And we have those uh, running attenuators between us. So uh, we're uh, playing with NVIS. So maybe we can get together sometime and, uh, oh, hang on a second. Absolutely. As far as, as far as for Baker to Vegas, um, we we got the approval to to be able to set up the gateway about uh, two and a half weeks before the race started. So we were not able to get a lot of communication out except for our, our own group. Um, and then uh, a couple of folks actually uh, put it out publicly to, uh, to a wider net, which is how we ended up getting so many people to to check in. 
uh, everywhere. But yeah, absolutely. We'd, we'd be happy to work with you out there in the high desert. Okay, Victor, can you uh, come on? Uh, one one sure. quick thing, I have to leave. I just been called out from the sheriff's office. So uh, I'm gonna leave and thanks for the information. I'll be in touch. Great, yep. hey. thanks Larry. Hey, Victor, what's up? I uh, just wanna let Bill down at Centralia know that I sent him a note on the uh, chat. I hope he picks that up before he gets out of here. Okay. Thank you. Good luck, Bill. Hey. This presentation will be going out on YouTube, on social media, all over the place. Uh, is, I sent it out an email to well over 2,000 hands, and it goes out the, the state agencies, state, uh, countrywide, federal and state. A lot of people watch it. Uh, so uh, your information is very, very useful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's important to get that information out. Uh, we're running along. I'll try to shorten this up if I can. Are there any more questions out there? I don't want to lose anybody. Ah, pretty quiet. Any comments? You are all welcome to join us on Sundays, 1 p.m. Pacific. Just go to wavetalkers.com, hit the join us, and we'll send you an invite. Yeah, and I'd like to thank the Rat Pat for uh, allowing the four of us to... Uh, Stand our soapbox for an hour and a half or so tonight. Yeah, but ditto, ditto. Very, important. Very thank much. you, thank you so much, and thanks to the Windling development yet. team. They're just fabulous. You, you have not seen the bill yet. <laughs> <laughs>